George Orwell's 1984, and the eradication of society through youth. Winston Smith is a member of the Outer Party. He works in the Ministry of Truth Record Department and rewrites and distorts history. To escape the tyranny of Big Brother, Winston begins a diary within his own mind, which is an act punishable by death. He grabs the attention of a dark-haired girl named Julia from the Department of Fiction, and he believes that she is his enemy and wants him to be neutralized. But a few days later, Julia secretly hands him a note that reads, I love you. It's discovered that the party has known all along about Winston's so-called crimes. In fact, O'Brien has been watching Winston for the past seven years. O'Brien devotes the next few months torturing Winston to alter his mindset. In the novel, it also employs this concept of doublethink, which is the ability to hold two opposing ideas simultaneously in one's mind and believe in both of them. Winston believes the human mind must be free, and in order to remain free, one must be allowed to believe in an objective reality, such as how 2 plus 2 equals 4. Throughout the torture, O'Brien forces Winston to believe that 2 plus 2 equals 5, but Winston is resistant. Eventually, O'Brien brings Winston to room 101, the most disturbing room in the Ministry of Love, the place where the prisoners confront their greatest fears, and in Winston's case, he is met with rats. Enjoyment Overall, the book was very enjoyable because the party's misleading propaganda techniques are so cunning that you don't see the intent behind them until Winston draws them to the reader's attention. It's an interesting concept to reflect on the fact that the book was actually written in 1949 and is an interpretation of what Orwell considered the future to be. Although the year 1984 is now in the past and we are not yet in a complete dystopia, this novel can be eye-opening when we realize all the connections that can be made to the current events of 2020. The novel is over 50 years old, but still applicable to our everyday lives, making it a classic in the education system, as well as the concept of implementing a book within the book for the reader to read simultaneously along with the protagonist is really alluring, and it's similar to the idea of the play within the play in Shakespeare's Hamlet. As well, our controversial world actually begins to mirror dystopia, so Orwell wasn't too far off with his interpretations of what the future could look like. Analysis of Theme Children are the cornerstones of society and a representation of the future generations to come. Children are raised within George Orwell's 1984, a society in which the conventional notion of parental dependency and kingship is limited to non-existent. This dystopian medium can be seen as a parallel to the reality of today, which can be seen in the news article named Apple and Google Named in U.S. Lawsuit on Colony's Child Cobalt Mining Deaths, 2019, submitted by The Guardian, and similar articles on child labor markets used among industrial companies. This highlights the manipulation of society commencing with youth by enforcing authoritative ideologies at a young age, utilizing unsafe and unsanitary living conditions to instill fear and vulnerability, and dissimulating the truth through the misuse of power. Enforcing authoritative ideologies at a young age. Children are targeted specifically because they are young, intellectually vulnerable, and can be easily conditioned to carry out the demands of authoritative figures. In 1984, the party works to sever family bonds such as trust, love, and loyalty. The junior spies celebrate when children betray their own parents, which leads to them adopting a hatred and fear of their own offspring. And these children are taught to bear more loyalty to the party than of their own parents. The home is no longer an area of safety and security. And the connection to the child labor market is that no other jobs can be found in the impoverished area of Congo. So large corporations exploit this fact and open up cobalt mines. And this is considered the norm in Congo, and children are conditioned to believe child labor is a common hardship of life that must be endeared. A quote from the novel. In the novel, there's a scene where Winston asks Tom Parsons how he got caught by the thought police, and he states, It was my little daughter, said Parsons. Pretty smart for a nipper of seven, eh? I don't bear her any grudge for it. Orwell, page 233. This demonstrates the true success of the party's manipulation as they have convinced all children to bear more loyalty to the party rather than their own kin. Outside Source Apple and Google named in U.S. lawsuit over Colony's child cobalt mining deaths. 
some of the largest brands in the world are being sued for their use of young children. For instance, the article states, the colony's families describe how their children were driven by extreme poverty to seek work in large mining sites, where they claim they were paid as little as $2. The Guardian, page one. Companies are aware of the poor life chances offered in these areas and are opening up large mining sites that offer thousands of jobs to exploit Congo's high poverty rates. Because of the high level of dependency on these companies, the companies can underpay their workers to take part in extremely dangerous jobs to provide just enough to continue living on. Utilizing unsafe and unsanitary living conditions to instill fear and vulnerability. Hazardous and inadequate environments are utilized to play on insecurity and weakness that comes within the years of adolescence. In 1984, all living spaces in Airstrip 1 are terrible, everything from victory mansions to the slums. Like how there are constant bombings and rumors of rats that terrorize and eat poor children. However, the government uses this to their advantage because they offer military defense during these times of war. These children learn to idolize the party over their own parents, and this is due to the fact that the government can provide more protection from danger than their own parents can. And the connection to child labor. Every night, the colony's children have to go to bed scared that they might not be able to financially sustain themselves up until the next day, and large companies profit off their unfortunate living circumstances. These children dream about being able to go to school and one day escape this life of poverty but they must first gather up the money to attend school. And so they turn to the mines. Novel quote. Victory Mansions is named ironically in itself since the living spaces are small and falling apart. They smell of, quote, boiled cabbage, Orwell page one. Also, the Book of the Brotherhood by Emmanuel Goldstein states, quote, the consciousness of being at war and therefore in danger makes the handling over of all powers seem the natural. Orwell, page 192. The passage clarifies that all the proles, including already vulnerable children, cannot help but feel helpless. Society believes that the party is the only hope to keep them alive and safe. Outside source. Based upon the Guardian's article named Apple and Google named in U.S. lawsuit over colonies' child cobalt mining deaths. The most powerful motivational tool employed by these businesses is not the mine's toxic gases or thin tunnels, but rather the concern that they might not have enough food or resources to make it to the next day. A defendant who is interested in the case states, quote, Her nephew was forced to seek work in the cobalt mines when he was a small child after the family could not continue to pay his $6 monthly school fee. The Guardian, page one. The vulnerability shown by this colony's child working to afford an education highlights the hope he carries for the future to be able to do something more with himself. Dissimulating the truth through the misuse of power. They do this by using propaganda and media platforms in order to deceive the public from seeing their wrongdoings. In George Orwell's 1984, Ingsoc forms various group organizations such as Junior Spies and Youth League which force children unknowingly to carry out the demands of the party. These organizations deceive children into interpreting the party's ideologies as valid and entertaining. It provides them with gadgets that help eavesdrop on their parents and features them in newspapers as child heroes. The praise and reward received entice their peers to follow similarly and play off of the attention children tend to crave. In connection to child labor, when large companies are confronted with questions regarding their ethics while sourcing cobalt, they provide sugar-coated answers to avoid enraging the public eye. They also attempt to convince everyone that the work endured in the mines are not deadly or dangerous by utilizing the terms like artisanal miners and primitive tools. The children of Congo also lack access to an adequate education. These euphemisms can either confuse or entice them into working in the cobalt mines because they are not able to comprehend the true meaning behind them. Novel quote. While Tom Parson brags about the latest technology from Junior Spies to Winston, he states, quote, What do you think the latest thing they've served them out with? Ear trumpets for listening through keyholes? Only a toy, mind you, still gives them the right idea. Orwell, page 63. Within Orwell's dystopian society, devices that disrespect other people's privacy are called toys. 
and are laughed at, encouraging them to be utilized within the home. The party's success is not only reliant upon brainwashing young minds to believe in their ideology, but also strategically allowing children to choose to be on the side of the party themselves, as they see it as enjoyable. Outside source. Euphemistic language is used by corporations to hide the use of child labor. Apple, Google slapped with child labor class action lawsuit, published by the International Business Times. The article reads, the companies were able to facilitate underage labor using words that made things sound less grave than they were. The underage workers were called artisanal miners to dress up the fact that the children were using primitive tools to dig for the mineral without help from safety equipment. The Business Times, page one. The use of euphemisms convinces the public and the children working in these mines that cobalt mining is not a dangerous task. In actuality, it can often be deadly. Large companies deceive them by referring them to terms like artisanal miners, where in actuality, they are just primitive tools. Many Congo children lack the education they need to interpret these words correctly, which is why they're more likely to simply agree with large corporations. Conclusion. Dystopias can often be scoffed at as far-fetched and ridiculous, yet our own realities have started to imitate these societies. And this can be seen in the hundreds of worldwide child labor markets. In George Orwell's 1984, reveals the party's cunning methods of deception. It also reveals the more clever manipulative strategies that the party uses to hide their wrongdoings. In media stories, they expose major corporations such as Apple and Google for using underage children to supply low-cost cobalt in smartphone batteries. And this indicates that not only do government agencies govern us, but even major corporations. Both mediums differ from each other, yet they all reflect greatly on the exploitation of power by authority, pushing any society to approach a dystopian state. And this is proven through the eradication of society through youth. Discussion questions. Number one, why does the party frown upon relationships? Number two, what do you believe is the most effective deception technique used by the party in the re-education of youth, and why? Number three, although it is clear that the party destroys bonds between parent and child, would it be possible for siblings to form an alliance against the party? A. How can the party be sure that siblings cannot form a bond? B. What techniques could the party use to break up this bond? And C. How could siblings conceal this bond from the party?